Hey guys, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Um, so in my shed, I have three portable generators. This is a Briggs & Stratton Elite, uh, 8,000 watt. Uh, what is the model number? Well, I'll get that for you, it's somewhere there. Um, it's, I believe, a 15 horse Vanguard engine. This was featured in another one of my videos, so we're just gonna do a quick little analysis of this generator. This is a Black Max with a 13 horse Honda. Um, very low hours. This is a Coleman Powermate that I picked up when I first moved to Florida. I think it's a 13 horse uh, Subaru EX30, I believe. So I was in here getting ready to winterize. These are just kind of storm, get the gas out of them, run and make sure everything's going okay. And I thought to myself, back to that video that I did on portable, or not portable, uh, UPSs for computers, and I thought, I wonder what the waveform out of a generator looks like. So I showed you that there's a wide variation between um, different types of UPSs. I compared, I believe, an APC or a couple APCs to a true sine wave UPS. Um, I believe it was a CyberPower, and I showed you the waveform on my scope here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, each one of these generators, I'm going to start it up, I'm going to plug it into the scope, and I'm going to kind of show you what the output of a portable electric generator looks like. These are don't believe these are terribly high quality ones, so I'm not expecting, uh, well, let's put this way, I'm expecting kind of chaos. Ideally, you want to see kind of a true sine wave waveform, uh, like you'd see out of an outlet, and I'll show you what that looks like momentarily. Well, I thought I would, but apparently GFCI outlets don't like uh, being hooked up to a scope, so that's not going to work. I'll show you what a, a, a good AC waveform looks like at the end, and I'll let you guys be the judge of uh, which generator here does the best. So first, we're going to do the, the Briggs & Stratton Elite. Through this test, I've rigged up a suicide cord, and it's kind of aptly named. I've hooked up the scope to uh, line and neutral, and once the generator's going, I'm going to plug it into each one of the outlets there, because uh, there's actually two legs coming out of the generator to make 240 volts, and i um, got to test them both. Uh, don't try this at home, please, for the love of God. This is not a good way to do this. It's not safe. Um, I might win a Darwin Award. I'm going to be running these in a shed, an enclosed area, full of gasoline, with electricity, sketchy electrical setup, so yeah. Let's hope I don't kill myself. All right, I survived generator one. Not dead yet. Um, you saw the waveforms. What I'll do is I save them to this USB, so I'll kind of show you what those look like uh, in the video so you get a better picture. I realize it's probably a glare. But you saw there's quite a bit of noise on there. I believe these gen this generator has a 20% total harmonic distortion gen head. Um, the better ones are 5% or less. Unfortunately, I think I said before, my scope um, doesn't really measure total harmonic distortion. And to do that, you need the FFT function. While it has an FFT function, uh, it, there's just not enough resolution in this scope to kind of calculate that. So we're just kind of kind of eyeball it and compare that to a reference signal that I'll show you at the end. So, all right, on to the next generator. All right, that first generator that we tested was, a, again, a Briggs & Stratton Elite Series. It's model number 030210, revision 02. Next, we're going to be testing this Black Max, and that is a BM10700JR. This one was manufactured in 2012, it says on the sticker. Is there a manufacture date on this one? Don't see one. Yeah, I'm definitely going to win a Darwin Award for this. Um, I thought that waveform from the Black Max looked a bit better. There was no weirdness. Uh, there were some strange spikes that we saw in the, 
in the Briggs and Stratton generator that I didn't see here. The waveform is still a little blocky. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll compare that to true sine wave power. Okay, now on to the Coleman PowerMate with the Subaru engine. I should have mentioned before, uh, like that Honda, this Subaru has one of these foam air filters. So you want to check these before you start your generator because they usually disintegrate after a couple of years. This one still seems to be okay. But if uh, you forget to do that, then the air filter is no good. You'll suck it into the motor and it'll make all sorts of god-awful noises and bad smells and you'll wonder what the heck's going on. So just remember to do that. And this generator is a model number PM064525. I'm reading that upside down, so please forgive me if I uh, missed, or, I missed any numbers or letters there. One thing to take note in this generator, I noticed this one doesn't really have a heat shield between the muffler and the generator. So I'd imagine this thing probably wouldn't hold up very well for, to long-term use. The other ones did have heat shields, like you can see right there on the Briggs & Stratton one. There's a pretty good size heat shield there, and the muffler is much farther away from the generator head. Pretty similar to the Honda to me. Um, hard to tell, really. As promised, there's the waveform from the outlet. Notice uh, there's no real jagged edges. The curves are smooth. Um, yeah, so again, I wish I could calculate the THD for you guys, but this, this scope just won't do it. Um, you need some pretty heavy-duty stuff to do that. I know Fluke makes a meter that does power quality analysis, but that thing's like $3,000. Anyway, um, so yeah, what do you do with this information? I guess you just gotta use that and decide whether or not you wanna use one of these uh, portable generators that have what I suspect is a fairly high total harmonic distortion, probably close to that 20% number. Again, I can't really base that on any science just by except looking at this these curves. Is it safe to run your sense of electronics? I don't know. Uh, I would do so at your own risk or shop for a generator that has an advertised low total, total harmonic distortion, uh, one that's 5% or less. I think pretty much all inverter generators fall into that category, and there are some uh, more expensive non-inverter generators that uh, have higher quality uh, gen sets. I know that uh, there's a, an Italian company that gets Mecalti. They're pretty well known for making uh, low THD generator heads. So do with this what you will. Hopefully, you found this information interesting, and if you thought if you did, uh, please subscribe and stay safe, everybody. Thanks for watching. So let's debrief a little bit and take a look at some of the, the captures from the scope. And I apologize in advance, I'm kind of new to this scope, I don't know it all that well, and I'm kind of new to scopes in general, um, but I thought this would be a good use of it. So here, I'm just going to go through all the captures that we took, starting with the Briggs and Stratton generator, and then going to the uh, Black Max and to the Coleman. And um, let's just kind of take some first observations, then we'll go back in the end and kind of talk about them a little bit. So this is the Briggs and Stratton, um, kind of zoomed out a little bit zoomed out even more <clears throat> and this is zoomed in on that obvious defect right there here's the black max the black max again the coleman and the coleman again let's go back to the briggs and stratton so right off the bat i think you'll notice that the overall curve the sine curve is is smoother than the other two so just look at how smooth this this uh, transition is here versus say the Black Max, and especially the Coleman. The Coleman's a lot rougher all the way around. <clears throat> and this kind of highlights that right there. This is kind of zoomed out to the same level. So just look at how smooth even the peak is here on the Briggs and Stratton versus the Black Max. And it's a lot rougher up here, and the Coleman rougher still. So now the Briggs and Stratton has an obvious defect. It looks like every second revolution. So you have one revolution, two revolutions right here. So I'm not sure what that could be. Um, you got generator experts out there, and obviously you can see here the scope is all over the place with the frequency, probably because of that defect. So any of you guys that are experts in, in small generators, be curious to hear what your thoughts are on that defect right there. You notice the voltage goes to zero for a very brief period. <coughs> um, I don't know what's causing that. Uh, if it was every revolution, maybe I would suspect think maybe a dead spot in the brushes, or I don't know, maybe this is a problem with the AVR. Just guessing here. Um, but this is kind of zoomed in right there, and you can see 
just kind of hovers at zero for a brief second. Uh, looking at the black max again, <clears throat> again it's a pretty consistent curve, pretty consistent amount of noise on the peaks, uh, high and low. I think this, this screenshot here was just at the second phase. And the Coleman obviously is noisier all the way around. So if you were going to be running any sensitive electronics, the Coleman would be my last choice here. <clears throat> the Black Max would be my second choice. And the Briggs and Stratton, absent <clears throat> this defect, every second revolution would be my, my first choice. Because this is a pretty smooth curve. Again, I don't have the equipment here to calculate total harmonic distortion. That's really the gold standard you measure this stuff by. Um, <clears throat> but just visually looking at that compared to, say, utility power, you can see that there's a pretty significant difference. So you see this curve is very, very smooth all the way around. Uh, it's almost exactly 60 hertz, and that's really controlled by the generator's RPM anyway, so that you can adjust that in portable generators pretty easily. But you see, just take a mental note of how smooth that is. Going back to the Coleman, Black Max, Briggs and Stratton. So you see the whole curve is... Uh, more consistently smooth on the Briggs and smoothest, but except for this defect, which I'd like to figure out. So again, if any of you guys know what this is, please chime in. So now this is obviously a, a no load test. Um, I'd like to do this same test under load at some point because uh, these curves can change once you put a load in the generator. So unloaded is pretty irrelevant. You don't really care what this curve looks like unloaded. You want to see what it looks like when you actually need it. So uh, maybe we'll do a follow-up video if I ever decide to dig into this problem, if I ever figure out what it is. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the, this little video series, and uh, if you did, uh, please subscribe and stay safe.